Over the past couple of years, there's been an explosion of popularity in deploying applications in containers, especially Docker containers. As developers have been working to containerize their applications, they've started looking at containerizing infrastructure as well, including databases. While there has been a lot of debate about whether databases are a good fit for containers, the fact remains that containerizing databases is getting more and more popular especially for development environments. Datastax has recently released official Docker images for the first time. In this video, I'd like to give you a quick introduction to deploying Datastax Enterprise in Docker. To do this, I'm going to use Killer Video. This is a reference application we've built that helps teach developers how to succeed with our technology. Killer Video actually has a long history with Docker. Before we had official Datastax Enterprise Docker images, Luke Tillman created unofficial images for Datastax Enterprise and Datastax Studio, and older versions of Killer Video use this Docker image set. You can now find our official Docker images for Datastax products on the Docker websites. First of all, the Datastax Enterprise server you will find in the Docker store. If you go to the home page for the Docker store, just search for Datastax Enterprise, and you will come to this page that will allow you to download the Docker image. From the command line, use the docker pull command to pull the version you require from the Docker store. The other images that are officially supported by Datastax, you can find on the Docker hub. This includes the Ops Center and Studio images. You can find these by going to the hub.docker.com website and searching for Datastax. Remember that all of these images are only supported for development at this time, not production. If you're interested in seeing the source that was used to build up these Docker images, you can go to GitHub to the Datastax org and look at the Docker images repo. Next, let's dive into how Killer Video makes use of these Docker images. If you go in GitHub to Killer Video and look at the Killer Video DSE Docker repo, you can see that we are building a custom image. It's based off of the official Datastax image for the DSE server. The reason that we've built a custom image is so that we can update the startup script that kicks off the execution of this container We've modified this startup script to load up the schema. So this would include CQL to define Cassandra tables. It also includes the definition of a search index for DSE search, as well as the definition of a graph for our DSE graph database. All of these three different kinds of schema need to be loaded up when our Datastax Enterprise node first starts up. If you'd like to see what this looks like, you can look at the bootstrap.sh script. We also have a separate repo in GitHub that is used to store a common set of Docker scripts. These can be used to help run the killer video application. For example, the default Docker Compose script is docker-compose.yaml. If you download an implementation of killer video, such as the killer video Java implementation, you will run this docker compose yaml file with docker compose which will create instances of all of the infrastructure that you need in order to run killer video let's have a look as you can see this docker compose file runs required infrastructure that we need for killer video including etcd which is a registry for services a registrator which is a helper container that assists us in getting some of our various services registered into etcd and most importantly for this success segment dse so you can see here that the for this particular uh, version of the docker compose file we are actually running our custom image of the dse server so that's called killer video and it's called killer video dash dse version 4.0.1 happens to be the latest right now this DSE node is started with search and graph enabled as shown by these flags here, which we are passing. We then make sure that the ports for uh, CQL, search and graph are all exposed. 
we actually name these ports and these ports are actually registered in etcd so if someone wants to look and see where the various capabilities of our datastax enterprise node are available they can actually look up these endpoints in etcd and the very last element here that we have in terms of environment variables that we are passing to our dse image this last item is required we have to explicitly accept the datastax enterprise license in order for this container to be able to run the docker common repo also contains a couple of other example compose files that you could use in order to run different configurations of datastax enterprise with some of our various tooling enabled for example there's another file that shows you how you can run dse alongside ops center so that you can monitor what is happening in your cluster. Another file is provided to help you run Datastack Studio, which is our developer tool that allows you to see, create, and execute queries in CQL and the Gremlin query language for graph. Finally, there is an additional Docker Compose file that demonstrates my favorite feature of our new Docker images, which is the ability to store the data directories that are used to store data for Cassandra and to realize these externally to the container. This allows you to maintain your data even if you are creating and destroying multiple instances of a container. Being able to keep your data is a very nice feature. I'd like to give you just a little bit more detail about how all of this works. We're going to use the Killer Video Java as an example. When I cloned the Killer Video Java repo onto my desktop, part of what is included are the Docker Compose files that I showed you previously. Those Docker Compose files are available under the lib Killer Video Docker Common. Now, when we go to start up the environment, including all of our Docker containers, Docker Compose will look for a .env file in the local directory. In this case, you can see that there are several environment variables defined in this .env file that Docker Compose will use in order to know information about the environment that we want to create. If you look at the second line, the compose file that is selected here is actually a list of two compose files. There's a docker compose.yaml in the root directory of killer video Java that defines some things that are required for that environment. For example, it starts a sample data generator that we've created. The first entry in that list is the docker compose volumes.yaml file. So that is actually the docker compose file that takes advantage of that feature I told you about a minute ago. This allows me to preserve my data directories external to the image. So what happens when I run a docker compose dash up? I'm going to use the dash D option so that the logs will appear in the background. Once I've started these containers, I'll choose to monitor them using the Kitematic, which is built into the Docker environment. As you can see, I have multiple containers that have started up here, including DSE, etcd, generator, and so on. I can select to view the logs of any of my running containers. If I watch closely, I can see the schema being loaded in my customized version of the DSE Docker image. There are several other features of the Datastax Enterprise Docker images that you can take advantage of. If you go to the Docker store page for Datastax Enterprise, you can see a full set of documentation for all the features that are available and how to best make use of the Datastax Enterprise container. Thanks for joining me for this quick segment on using Datastax Enterprise Docker images with Killer Video. I hope this gives you a head start on using these images in your own applications.